If you own a small business, you've put a lot of work, sweat, and love into it. So you have to protect it and pass it on to someone who will take care of it as hard as you do. Gifford Collins joins us with three steps you can take now to make sure that happens. He's an attorney and owner of Collins Law Firm. Hey, Giff. Morning, Molly. How are you? I'm good. Great to see you. I think this is so important. And I think about small business owners, and there's been this big focus on them lately with the pandemic. Right. And I think about how much love and attention and sweat equity they put into what they're doing. And, and they're so busy, they probably aren't thinking about the succession of their business. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. Yeah, so let's talk sure. about these three steps. The first step you say is to protect your business. Yeah, so protect yourself and your business because one of the big benefits of having a business is that you can protect your personal assets from issues that the business might run into. So to protect yourself, you know, we put some documents in place. We have ownership agreements like operating agreements. We have employment and independent contractor agreements. Um, we have our maintenance agreements, which, you know, we keep track of what the business is doing using minutes and resolutions. Uh, we also do intellectual property agreements that uh, ensure that the, the value of your business is being protected from someone actually disclosing that to an outside party. Those, those documents, I think, are so key. And I know that's where you come in. You help explain what someone needs based on what they tell you about their business. It's, it's about planning for the future. And a lot of people think, of course, about death. You know, if something happens to the small business owner, what, what happens to the business? But it's not just death. It's things like disability, right, and retirement right. and life changes like divorce. Yeah, so that particular document that we use is called a buy-sell agreement. A lot of people are familiar with them. And we plan, similar to the issues that you would plan for in life, for your business. So if the, an owner dies or if there is a disability, if there's a divorce, if there's an absentee owner, we pre-plan how the business will continue to run, who is going to own those shares uh, after the death or disability of someone, and whether an owner can hang on to those shares uh, and for how long after they become disabled. So there's a lot of moving parts with, with small businesses uh, that we want to plan for so we can avoid a larger conflict in the future. And I love that you make it easy for people and think through all those things. Okay, so moving on to step two, you say capture the value of your business. What does that mean? Yeah, that means because, you know, so many small business owners are working so hard on their business. Uh, they're, they're not they're working in their business, not necessarily on their business. So I don't really think about, well, you know, how much is it worth or how is my family actually going to benefit from this business if something were to happen to me? So one of the best ways to do that is to ensure that you have sufficient policies and procedures. So if the business does need to be sold, the new owner is able to just walk right into the business and you know essentially keep it going without too many hiccups um, another way that you can ensure that you capture the value of the business is by using key employee agreements so there might be that certain employee who is considering taking over the business and we can use life insurance policies that would allow allow that employee to fund which we'll get into more um, but there's there's really you want to ensure that when you pass that business on, you're creating value by putting those policies and procedures in place. You also say to have an appraisal done, which is interesting because people think about that for their home, but maybe not necessarily for their business. Right, and you can do an informal appraisal or a formal appraisal, uh, but typically what you'd want to do is set a baseline to ensure that, you know, as you're moving forward, people have realistic expectations about what the business might bring in the market. Step three, then, you say, is figure out how to um, fund the buyer's purchase of your business. Right. And I, I touched on that a little bit earlier. It, one of the main issues here is a lot of times people will find that person who wants to buy the business. And a common agreement is we'll give you a certain percentage of whatever the revenue is for this particular year. However, if that new owner doesn't run the business as well as it was run before, if there's a dip in sales, then that new owner may not or the seller may not capture the value that uh, they were hoping to with, with the new business. So by putting some default protection into these agreements, uh, we can avoid that. Uh, but then also, like I was saying before, we have key employee agreements where it's a benefit for that employee to stay. And if something were to happen to the owner, 
there's a life insurance policy that pays the new buyer money that he can give to your your beneficiaries so you're able to actually capture the full value of that business because it is a, small business owners spend so much time building these businesses because they have a dream to have something different than what you know other people might have where they have some freedom and they do really put their heart and souls into them and it's important to try and capture as much of that value as possible. I know you're passionate about doing that. Estate planning can seem complicated to people. I'm sure business succession planning also seems overwhelming to people. And that's why meeting with you, I think, makes it all so easy because we want to do right by the people that we love and kind of pre-plan for those life circumstances and changes. So I appreciate what you do. Thank you so much, Giff. Thank you, Molly. All right, here's the information to you because right now, if you mention the Morning Blend when you call Collins Law Firm, you will receive 10% off your planning, which is fantastic. Do it now. It's never too soon to do it. And the website is giftcollinslaw.com, or you can call this phone number and set up an appointment or virtually meet. It's 414-207-6292.